Well, you guys know what time it is. It is main event time. And man, in February, I came on this show. Let me show y'all the shirt that I got on. It's a Chris Jericho shirt that I have on everybody. Had to show the uh, Twitch stream. I came on this show and I said, never count out Chris Jericho. I then pontificated in one of the groups in March. I was like, Jericho's getting a title shot this summer. And that came to fruition as well. Got hit, ended up with a title shot. He rebuilt the, the, the physique. He's been awesome this entire year. And I'm going to start the agenda now. He might not win it, right? I think there's somebody else that has the pole position. But you cannot, I don't care who you are, you cannot deny this man is a wrestler of the year candidate. Chris Jericho has been phenomenal on promos. He has built another unit around him. He's been incredible on pay-per-view. He now has another championship match with Moxley. This match fucking ruled. I lost my mind watching this match just because, you know, Lionheart came out. Um, he came out, I believe, to his ECW music, so he didn't quite get the WCW music like I wanted. Uh, but it's close enough. I saw, uh, I think it was J.J. Williams did an edit of, uh, you know, Jericho with the with the overdub with the music I wanted. Um, and he came out with the with the Lionheart tights, the, the, the kind of like uh, mock-up of them. Um, came out, had the hair. Kind of, kind of wrapped up a little bit. And James, this was just a, just a hard hitting technical war. Um, these guys were, they were bleeding. One of them was bleeding the real way, which was Jericho, and it was like there was a hole in his head. Um, he got hard way on a on a uh, open on an exposed turnbuckle, didn't he? Yeah, like it was like a hole okay. in his forehead. That shit was pouring out um, as he put the lion tamer on at the end. Uh, it was really coming out badly um they were like jericho was taking it back you know to to his old days mox was incredible in this match too this is one of my favorite matches of the year um i i thought this was incredible uh four and three quarters for me and this was just like i, I love the finish um it, it really felt like tense i didn't expect jericho to win i'm not i'm not out of off my rocker or anything uh, but this was just like Every all the belief that I ever had in Chris Jericho felt like it paid off uh, in this in this match this whole year uh, that that he's been building up doing this awesome work you know and sticking it to people who wanted him to leave the business and, and all this stuff and I, I and Moxley the the year he's had you pull up his cage match it is filthy this year um, this is another match to add uh, on his but this was just like I thought it was great they got like. Um, it got the proper time. It didn't feel shortchanged. It didn't feel rushed. I was, I felt like I got off a roller coaster when I saw this match. And this was just a, a never doubt Chris Jericho moment. And I don't know if his, you know, he'll, I don't think he'll ever be the champion again, right? But this was, mm-hmm. this was damn close. This was as good as it felt. I think this blew away their, their first match. And I, I think just people like, like niggas forgot. Like uh, about Jericho, uh, like what what he can do, and, and this guy's fifty one years old, and he's not washed. Like he's like constantly reinventing in real time, and pe- I don't think people respect that man for doing this. He's not a nostalgia act. He doesn't want to wrestle the old guys. He wants to like wrestle the the guys that are pushing the game forward today, and still like y- use him being Chris Jericho to blend with that to create new memories. He's not. Uh, ripping off like you know wrestlers from the past like he's got his his own I know it, obviously he pulled out a nostalgia trick tonight right like he pulled out Lionheart Chris Jericho and stuff right that, that's fine that's fine that's fine he's ripping if he's gonna rip off anybody you can rip off yourself yep <laughs> but like fuck? like no, how, how dare you go out there and do the shit the shit that you actually like you know did like what 
Yeah. That's perfectly fine. It's like, it's, perfectly like, it's fine. like, I know he, he, he played, he looked to his past, but the past basically allowed me to see, like, when I saw that guy in 1996, I saw a top star, even though WCW didn't. And then I saw the fucking Lionheart walk out there as a top star this, to this day. And that shit was a great moment for, um, for a lot of Chris Jericho fans. And, uh, I think people need to quite frankly, uh, be thanking Chris Jericho a lot more than they do. I thought it was a great match. I thought it was one of the best matches of the year that I've seen. So like, I would, I would give it like, I would give it four and a half stars as far as like the four and three, like, uh, whatever else it, it's up for debate. Um, I, I, I think that like from a work rate, work rate perspective is not there at that level. Uh, but from a from, from, from everything else and all the stuff around it and what you saw as far as the drama, I thought they told a hell of a story and had a hell of a match. Um, like if I was going to compare this to anything I've seen recently, I would compare this a lot to like the Kaido Kiyomiya versus, um, versus, uh, Muta match, Muta match, as far as just like, it ain't, it's, it's not about the moves, man. It's about the drama and the selling and, and the intensity and, and like the, the back and forth and, you know, the roller coaster of emotion in, in what they do. Uh, another match I'd throw in there, uh, in that particular case in a, in a different way is not nearly on that level. It was like the, the Tanahashi in evil match that they had in, in the G1 where it's like you you it's evil you know you're not finna get you know some Matt classic but like you bring, bring the elements he has and like to see like Tanahashi like overcome three of these evil motherfuckers evil doers it, it was just like yes yes that that's what pro that that is what storytelling is good triumphs over evil even 103 fuck them we ball yes so <laughs> i i yes i in that, in that perspective like i love this match um and i mean it, it might be my favorite singles uh chris jericho match in AEW. it might be i'd have to go over to think about it because i really i really did love uh Moxie's first match with this, all the all the storytelling and the and the eye patch and tricking Jericho at the end and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that program they built through it and even the match and the story in the match. But like I think this this match does top that though. This match does top that. But I have to think about the other stuff. Jericho's had a few um, bangers in like even the Kingston match. I probably like the Kingston match probably like a better match on a rewatch type of thing. But I probably liked this match more too. Um, so like, yeah, he's had a, he's had a hell of a year for a 51 year old dude that is like, keeps finding ways to like adjust his game for the decline of like athleticism and aging and whatever in health and whatever's going around with him. Like he is, ma- <sighs> this man came off the fucking deathbed, James. Yeah. Like it, it's interesting to see like this match between Moxley and with Jericho given that like Mox I, I remember me and uh Josh Smith from Keeping a Strong Style was talking about like he was saying like, yeah, man, Jericho just too, you know, his conditioning because of you know his his hot his lifestyle with the drinking, like it just doesn't seem like he's gonna have to switch that up. And I was like, There's nothing to suggest he's gonna switch it up. And then he had the health scare and he had to switch it up. And like it, he's lighter, and he's able to do more. He's able to, you know, kind of get, kind of get a lot of it back, right? And like Moxley, it, it, this whole year reminds me of like when he showed up in the G one, and it was like he had got himself in that incredible shape uh, to be able to go through and withstand the G one, and you know, had a match with Ishii and all that kind of stuff, and how he felt great, all that kind of stuff, and then like you saw him like just get like bulkier, and you know. And then he shows up and like he's in that kind of G1 shape all over again. Except like he does he's not like getting done and like worrying about like uh alcohol withdrawal anymore. Like he's he's like he's he's in that shape plus like he's not drinking and like I feel like his his just like endurance and his ability to like keep a pace is just like the best it's ever been and like he he's killing it this year he really has and i've seen him even in some of these garbage matches that i would never watch people love those matches or whatever else but just like him in the ring this year like it's <laughs> he's he's killed it and this is not some person i thought was going to be out here as a fr- 
I don't know whether you say legitimate or fringe, at most outstanding performer level wrestler. But like the proof's in the pudding so far this year with him. I he I, I mean I have to look up Osprey to see like what well, how that matches up as far as like number of great matches he's had around the world. But like he has to be up there. Like I looked and he's had like fourteen like eight match or eight, eight or above on cage match, which is like that is that's doing some damage. Um, indeed, he, he's killed it this year. He absolutely has, and happy for him. Um, happy for both of them, and like you know, they really enjoyed it because like they're you know, they're they're friends or whatever else. So like, yeah, I, I'm sure they you know, I don't think they'll do the the Kenny Omega and um, Jericho thing where they talk about and break down the match or whatever else on podcast form. But I'm I'm sure they they really they're they're proud of that one. I'm I'm sure they are. They definitely should be, and I, you know, I was very happy to 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 see that. And then, like, I, like I was, I don't often get on the edge of my seat watching wrestling. I would say a couple times a year it happens for me. I'm, you know, really invested in something. It just, you know, you watch wrestling for years and years, and you you kind of like know where where things are going. And it was like that wish that maybe something was going to happen. Like, maybe Chris Jericho was going to win. Maybe he's going to find a way against conventional wisdom, against booking logic and knowing where everything's going. And I just... Yeah. I'll take his way to the belt. I kind of just... I kind of just allowed myself to fall into what they were doing. And, bro, when he pulled back and then he lifted his head up and it was all the blood, I was like, oh, my God. Like, I was was, was completely done there. It was was great. Um, Love this match. Um, But after that, 